I look like an insane Geppetto in that uh, tag picture. We're live, by the way, so watch your language. in for a reason, but I forget what it was. <laughs> now you guys are going to have to watch me set up on the air. Oh, that's not normal. That's very usual. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody. I'm just trying to get set up. I'm just as prepared as you expected me to be. <laughs> Which is to say, not as Possibly less so. Oh my gosh, so many folks so fast. Okay. Rachel Powell, hello. Jose Urbina, hello. Julie B, Ross Riker, Scuba Steve, Christopher Mazzoke, Spastic Pug, Lisa Arpent. That's a tough one. That's like, my mouth doesn't make all those consonants together at the same time. Good. Uh, like a four, Michelle Schulte, Cutwork Studios, Captain Mojo, Rob O'Brien, Scott Creighton, Atomic Soup. Delicious. <laughs> Blind Cook Thor, oh, Chessy Papa Bear. I like Atomic Soup, that's a great name. Atomic Soup is a great name. Uh, Courtney Pepino, hello. HPK Styles, yes, I was a little bit late tonight, my apologies. Things was happening. Uh, Chad Smith, John C. John C. <laughs> Jordan, hey buddy, uh, Steve Bishop. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys over. That's all the individual hellos I have time for. Now they're lengthy group hellos. Okay. Boom, shakalaka. Yes, it is Stacy here with me. I think my wife might come over later. I don't know. I don't think Stacy's here that long. I don't know. She's been here since like 5 a.m. Who knows? <laughs> it's uh. Yeah. She's busy. I can hang out and read And I have been um, nibbled to death by ducks today. I've been doing a lot of little things. It was I. Not great. It's a sound. Lisa, it sounded like a Stacey left. It, it, it's, a, it's a Stacey. You can hear me, Kevin. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, phrasing. My horns are hard now. Uh, my horns are hard. Luckily, see, I said that over what you said. Thank uh -huh. goodness. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's good. I'll probably uh, do another layer on them and comify it so that I can then paint it. Oh, Rodney's on. Do you want to show Rodney the, the demo hood? Oh, yes. Certainly. So this hood is our hood pattern that Stacy is going to use to make you a hood. I find this to be a very good hood for masks. It allows the mask to be seen from the side. You don't have a lot of, you know, you could do this, and that is very not effective, <laughs> but normally the mask mm -hmm. will help the hood stay in place. He says awesome. And we always darken the inside of this with paint, ink, whatever. Okay. You said, hello all at Hardcore Ops. Yes, yes. Um, you guys know how, you know, uh, liquid nails gets. It, it's, a, it's a nice material. It's a liquid, and then it becomes a solidish. Rodney, I think, right now, I'm going with a classic black. So yes, you? because we wanted the, I want you to have the most possible options, so I think we're going to do black for you. Um, you know, if we do a, a bright color or a, a color, then that locks you into something costume-wise. So not knowing what else you have planned, I think black is the best way to go. 
according to Pena says you look a little like John. Who's John? Oh, you look like little John. Sorry. I missed an A. But it added in an A. Like Robin Hood's buddy? Like Robin Hood's buddy. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm a little short for little John, but okay. <laughs> there actually there was a BBC Robin Hood. And when I was younger, I looked a lot like the actor who played Robin Hood. Nice. I like this question called handsome, so <laughs> maybe he's not as nice as you think. I, I it's just a little black dress. In the yes. That's, yes, it goes everything. That's what you got to do. Yeah, I've certainly been called worse. You know, I had someone tell me once I looked like Darius Rucker. I don't know who that is. He is a black country singer. Uh, formerly, yeah, formerly, oh, uh, no, my couch and cried and I had a beer and felt sorry for myself. I said, let her cry. Uh, the yes, he's that guy. Really? Yes. Huh. I don't. I don't see it. I don't. Yeah, see, that guy. If I was in the band, it would be Oakfish. Oh, Rachel Powell, Rob. Little John Walker, Paul, who's the Latin guy? What about the other one has to say? One of my favorite Disney cartoons, by the way. Grace says Wagon Wheel. Is that his country band? Oh, is that his name? I have no idea. Remember that time you had contacts, man? Yes. And I needed it? And you told me where it was? Hiding. Those were good times. You, you really you hit the crowd out. I literally hit the crowd out. I am a master Easter egg hider. <laughs> oh, it's his song, Grace says. Wagon Wheel. Wagon Wheel. His post who you song. Is that the one about horses in the back? No, that's the... Uh, oh my god. <laughs> we are not hip. No. None of us know what's going on. Happy Mojo says you have to sing with very well in the vowels. Roddy Pope says somebody said I look like Neil McCoy. Okay. And then if they say Neil Diamond, you say then or now. So that's a very important distinction. <sighs> Rich Powell says country, he's just Darius Rucker, and Wagon Wheel's more than a sip song. So I still prefer him as the lead singer who you would look fish. Who is? Uh, Darius Rucker. Oh. Zika says I get Meatloaf, Jack Black, and Sean Mullins. I could totally see Jack Black. Ezekiel. I don't like Michelle Ball. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Grace says, Billy Cyrus and Little Mouse. Little Mouse did Old Town, Old Town Road. That's the name. Okay. Thanks, Got Gray. Our, Thank you, our, young person. Our token. I, too. To, about to be 15 year old. Hello, fellow young person. <laughs> I, too, am young person. Fellow kid. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a, a latex battery? Yeah. What? I'm going to pour up some of those. Like, it's a little battery holder. That's so clever. And I just glue it onto the back of the I mask, like and then it. I can tuck a 9 volt into it. I'm going to do it with uh, EVA like a sucker. Yeah, don't do that. Ezekiel says, Sean Mullins had the lullaby song. Ezekiel says, Sean Mullins had the lullaby. It still doesn't mm -hmm. put any bells in terms of what it looks no. like. No. We'll take your word on it. At least ask, what mask is that? This is going to be a white Krampus. I am dreaming of a white Krampus! Just like the ones I yeah. used to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Happy Mother says Whistler singing. This is happening. Autographic Girls Closer wants a Sean Mullins. Ezekiel. Nice. Nice. That's good. I got backstage at a, um, a Cowboy Knot um, concert where the, the trumpet player from Hootie and the Blowfish was there. They needed a lighter so I could light their candles. Okay. And I had a lighter. I was like, I come with it. And he was like, all right, come on back. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I was there doing side shows in New Orleans. I was there doing side show. So I was like, while you're here, here's a nail and I have enough stash in my bra. Blorp. And he was like, oh, oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> I was like, yes. You, you made it weird. Claim to fame. Made the trump player Moody Bloodfish cringe like crazy. Grace says, we still have Calvin off drumsticks. Yes, we do. What do you think of the Dark Elves from Krampus? I love them. I love them. I think they were a great, refreshing design. I love the masks that they had. 
Uh, I thought they were very well done. Lisa said icicles, I hope. Everything's going to be on. Okay, I that. Yeah, I thought the uh, Dark Elves from Krampus was actually really well done. Happened about this. Why did he need candles? The birthday cake? Yes. That is exactly why. And no other reason. I <laughs> started telling that story. I'm over at my daughter's wedding. Hey, you know what? Remember that time you told the heat got away and I didn't listen? <laughs> so glad, because now I can use it. That's right. The Harry Beastie says greetings. Hello. Hello. Hello in Scotland. You normally say hello from Scotland. Sometimes. Not anymore, because now I know where you're from. You no longer feel the need. Lisa Art says, pumpkin lot mystery. So strange. I'm sure I would. <laughs> Jesus, I got lyrics for days. I like the musical. Oh, yeah. 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 My life is a nature documentary. Punctuated by Godzilla noises. No. Shannon's not here right now. Stacy is here right now. Hi there, BT. Yeah, that's that's battery holder. Clever. I like it. Ross Richard says met the keyboardist from Sticks and a total fanboy moment. It was so cool. I feel as blessed. I got a tour guitar pick. Put his groceries away for him. Thanks. Cool. It worked for a lot of those creatures in Krampus just after this period last summer. Just for the internet. Um, yeah. yes, but he disappeared. I mean, he was he was a mystery for such a long time. So, you know, it, it's not surprising at all that he did that. Um, lots of folks, you know, if you don't know who Pumpkin Rod is, he just puts out beautiful scarecrows, you know, and, and beautiful uh, Halloween art. Um, Agent Jenkins says, hey, Alan, are you still planning to be open on Halloween? Yes. That's nice. Yes. Our plan is to open through the haunted house and Halloween season. Uh, we are staying abreast of current developments. The governor of Texas has a plan, a strike force to reopen Texas. Uh, Time-wise, it should be mid-August when we are able to open our show. Um, which of course then we just get to work building our show. So great. Yes. Our modified version of our show. Hello, Corey Seymour. He says my life is a roller coaster punctuated by a twelve year old son that tests every fiber of his existence. Oh. There you go. Jordan says, Do you know the YouTuber known as Pumpkin Rod? He she is a polar who specializes in freaky spectrums. Yes. Yes, we are we are we are discussing them. Yes. Excellent work. Alexa, stop. That's gotta be for you, right? That's for these. Okay. Is it said 15 to 20 minutes? Does it matter if you make three for the... I'm like 10 minutes. <laughs> Rip them out. I don't mess around. We're going to paint some masks. That's what I said. Yeah. I may or may not have lied to you. <laughs> we'll find out together. I hope I didn't lie to you. Because you have a lot of masks to paint. Because I have a lot of things to paint. Hello, Scott Colhart. Corey Seymour, do you have a, uh, a website for your masks? Do you have a website for your mask or is it a Facebook page? Because if you were to send that to like Scott Colhart, I think people would like to see your work. Is Corey on the Facebook group? Corey, are you on the Facebook group? The Still Feast Live Creepers? Did I say it right? One. Yesterday. Brandon D says, Alan, would you be able to laser cut some stuff for the store, like felt or balsa wood silhouettes? Um, we, uh, we laser cut some fabric today, actually. So it's possible. I mean, there might be someone in your area who could do 
it. But uh, it's possible. Let me know what you need. After you paint that, do show what cut? No. <laughs> it was an accident. You didn't even mean to cut it. Secrets. Accidental secrets. Secret, secret. I got a secret. Asano says, painting awesome. This is now black. Before it was latex colored, and now it is black. Jordan says, I love the swamp photos. One of Puck and Rod's works. Corey says, I don't think I have a Facebook business page and an Etsy page for masks. Did you say I should send it to? Uh, Scott you could send Colhart. it to Scott Colhart, who is on. And then he can post your link, because I think people would like to see your work. Jack says, that's what I did today. I started out based on a mask with new paint gun. Awesome. Uh, so, question: Do you do anything with dyeing ethylene silicone oil, or thinking about perhaps the platinum silicone I might be able to dilute if it's in nuggets and pressed in plants? So same. Yes, um, I have. I have, but I bought it in liquid form, the silicone oil, um, in order to thin silicone, platinum gel ten. However, it does stay a little bit tacky, so we use something called prosthetic deadener normally to make a change. But if you use too much deadener, it'll again get tacky. To and clarify, nuggets? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in nuggets? Yeah. Of the chicken variety? There was a point where I had everything that I needed to make chicken nuggets in my shop. Gross. I'm not even kidding. Double gross. Yeah. Stanley S says, what are the small circles on the back of the neck for? Oh, so when I sculpted this, I used it in order to, uh, I put these eyelets in and these are all just latex now, but I, because I put the eyelets in, now um, I can cut this and we can add lacing in here if you want that as an option. That's an option for you, but most people can just fit this on over their head without it. But I will probably cut it up to here and put a dot so that doesn't spread any. Jordan says, did you do something with your hair? You look elevated. Uh, my hair is bigger than normal. It's just Lift. Yes, and normally my hair is slicked back, and I did not put anything in my hair to slick my hair back. Or you see me after I got out of the pool, and my hair is wet because the pool is cheaper than air conditioning. Uh, let's. No, I'm not going to grease up the goat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I knew what I meant. Sit my son. Gonna set him out of the way somewhere safe ish. I did not dye my hair. It just looks lighter because it's dry and there's no product in it. Your dad's hobby was drinking. Well, some people, when they drink, become a monster. Cheaper than AC and healthier, too, to get you the cool I guess. Character, your ratios of plant cells, silicone oil, deadener? I forgot the name you said. Um, the silicone oil, I never put in more than uh, 5%. I never put in more than 5% because it that can make your silicone a little unstable. So I, I only played with that for a little while. Uh, the prosthetic deadener, I have gone um, up to 100%. So, you know, if you use, you know, 100 of A, 100 of B, 100 of deadener. But I've seen 200 deadener, where half of it is deadener. Um, I wish that made it cheaper, but prosthetic deadener is just ex expensive as silicone. Scott Fuller, got my purple shirt today. Awesome. Team purple shirt. Uh, it all depends on what, what ratio you use and, and how you use it. It depends on exactly what you're doing. For a mold, I wouldn't use any deadener. You know? Um, yeah. Let's. Ezekiel says, second day of school holidays. I might not get through two weeks. Oh. But you did you did like months at home. How are their sculptures coming, Ezekiel? Jose Urbina says, are there any mugs available? There are mugs on the Teespring site, yes. We are going to very quickly here 
uh, no, we're not going to strap the Cyclops because it's going to be a sock mask. So I'm going to sock mask it. And I have to get a, a different head form because the fellow that this is going to is a larger man. Large. And he's going to have a larger head. Courtney Papino says, would flex seal stick to latex and elbow screw? Uh, latex, yes. But it does not stretch like latex stretches. So if you stretch a latex too much, it will crack off. It will stick to Elmer's glue, which also does not stretch. Jordan says, I'm worried about the mask you sent me. You use latex. Not sure what I'll do when it eventually decays. Uh, you will have a mask that decays. That is, that is the glory of latex. And that's what makes it valuable and collectible, because they're, they're not, not going to last forever. That's like China glassware is normally more valuable than um, things made out of stone because it's more delicate. Ezekiel says it was a great day. We got the heads based out, and we started to do some structure, a bit like herding cats. We'll have another day tomorrow. Awesome. I love that. Pinshot says, would you do a silicone or a foam mold of a cinder block? I would do a, okay, well, depends on what I want to make the cinder block out of. I would probably make the cinder block out of five pound foam. So that means I would make a silicone mold. Spiders got mad at me for shooting off their buddies and kicked them off. Try to get you. They did. Third degree terrorist, so you make me sound like large Marge. No, I just know that your head is uh, you don't you don't have a tiny melon. I too am not in the tiny melon category. Pinchot says okay. No problem. Pinchot says platinum or tin based. Uh, I would go tin base because it's cheaper and you're not making like a prosthetic out of it, so you don't need stuff that's safe for human skin contact. Unless somehow you're making a cinder block that is also a mask, which is possible. Now try them in the shark. Okay. Um, Zika says, we got the big melons, Warren. Apparently, more brains. Right. Corey Seymour says, last time I was on here watching your live stream, you asked me about Mothman mask. If you do have a Mothman mask, the Mothman Museum even purchased one from me. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've done a couple Mothman masks. I have a whole stilt Mothman. Like how I'm doing this so that you guys can't see anything? <laughs> I'm a jerk. Third degree terrorist is I'm not insulted. I'm comfortable with my bucket head. My little bucket head has the sweetest smile. My little bucket head. Come stay a while. Okay. Rich Powell, is there any possibility of seeing a flocking goat tonight? Uh, it's 9.15. Uh, we can attempt to flock a goat this evening. Ezekiel says, oh, he's a crooner from way back. Sure. You know what? I only remember that because in the movie The Three Amigos, and I watched it as a kid. So I, I remember the, my little buttercup has the sweetest smile. All right. So I have a very exciting life. You guys know that. Uh, wild times and parties and things. One of the more exciting things uh, that happened to me yesterday bought new scissors. You can hear them do the scissory thing. They're actually very nice. Dan Corson's here. Dan! Ms. G says, love that movie. Yeah. Love that what? That movie. Uh, very funny. I, 
tend to reenact the scene uh, every now and then with the uh, plethora. What is a plethora? Funny ones. Stacy, you tell a story. So, just in case you ever wondered if um, if he treats uh, treats the, the office staff any different, um, today was my uh, trial by fire and resin casting. Um, I did, in fact, uh, successfully make some shark teeth, um, but <laughs> I was literally about to leave, like like just about packing up to go, and he goes, "You want to make some shark teeth?" And I was like, "Do we want to make some shark teeth? Of course, I want to make some shark teeth." So he's like, here you go, resin thing. And like, conceptually, I've seen resin ma been made before. I've, I have watched him make it. I have watched him on the live streams make it. I have mixed silicone, which is not too terribly dissimilar. This is my first time messing with this. And I may have over eyeballed how much we needed. Um, so not only did I make some uh, delightful teeth, I also made a <laughs> a beast, beast man, man a beast man and amulet, a and a amulet. skeletor amulet, um, because all of the resin. Do these have a distinct top and bottom? Like, uh, yeah, the, the pointy end is the top jaw, bottom jaw. Is yes. it a slightly bigger one? The top. Bigger one is the top. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm making a sock mask right week. Um, Jordan says, do you wish you could be a baby again? And Stacy, you're sweet. Uh, no, I have no desire to be a baby again. I think I would just be angry. <laughs> um, and you know what? Maybe babies have more possession of their faculties than we think, but they don't have the motor skills to talk and all that stuff. Some of the creepier things that I've read are about children who seem to remember past lives yes. and you know they'll say things like they'll be taken to a new place and the kid will just say you know this is where I died. Oh, <laughs> Steve Bishop says I bought new scissors for my studio my wife used them for something she said they were great and I haven't seen them since. Yeah sometimes wives are jerks. I think this top one is going to need some the loop. Yeah, some adhesive. To yeah, it. yeah, they they'll both need adhesive. And right now it's kind of stretched out a little bit, so. Yeah. But as long as the length is right, we're good. Happy to Mojo says, did you get some fresh contact cement yet? Yes, I bought some the other day. I don't think we put it back or even brought it in. Yes, we did. I bought all the stuff. Up. Okay, great. We're just trying to use up the stuff that's a little more boogery. While it's still usable. We did, however, get that new, the gel kind, which yeah. seemed all right. Yes, we tried gel contact cement. So I am certainly willing to try new things. Stacy, do you want to show people the... Uh... So my accomplishment for today? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Here, I'll trim him. Beastman Angular. Okay, so this is what I did today uh, and the last couple of days is working on our um, apocalypse for an order. Um, so today was largely spent detailing PDA foam stuff. So we got some big patches made today. We got this shoulder piece made today. We got everything attached the thing today, we got the gloves made today, got the gauntlets made today, got the helmet painted today, um, the boots painted. I'm actually pretty pleased with how the boots turned out. The so, boots? The boots. These are still cover boots and they will 
fit over the top of of stilts. Um, they velcro in the back like so. Um, these were actually the boot part was already put together. I just added all of the the detailing and, and these guys and then painted them. Um, or we just, you can walk in those. Yeah, on stilts even. <laughs> these these will go from the ground and the stilt will will uh, just be enclosed in that. But also, if you want to make a person into a dwarf, <laughs> they're excellent. For He's that. gonna do this, and it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna take you a minute to get in here. You go like this. <laughs> oh, it's even funnier in shorts. Oh God. All right, here we go. Oh, you in? I'm in. If I were making like a dwarf costume, Wait, this we is gotta, exactly what I would do. We gotta pull back a little bit. This is exactly what I would do. Just unplug it. There you go. Just unplug it. Okay. Freedom. Horrible, horrible freedom. From closer to easier. Probably. It does, normally. Oh, for F's sake. There you go. You did it! Take that. <laughs> so yeah, if I had to make a dwarf costume, this is exactly <laughs> what I could do for boots, size-wise. <laughs> Happen Emoji says, great job, Stacey. You play Warhammer 40K? I do not play Warhammer, but I do have friends who do. <laughs> the Spook Shack says, looks like you're standing on your knees. Yes, but all I did was I made my feet wider. Isn't this ridiculous? Horror Beauty says, Oompa Loompa. Horror Beauty <laughs> Moon Boot flashback. What's great is my height hasn't changed, but I look three feet shorter. <laughs> Horror Beauty no cabbage patch, please. Corey says, now put on some windrows. I don't know what that is. Um, you guys are having too much fun. That is, that's correct. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I did today. Um, today was mostly painting and getting things assembled on the... Um, oh, the Dwarven Metal Band. Yes! Okay, I'm about it. Rob O'Brien says, do you represent the Lollipop Guild? <laughs> So yeah, so I'm excited about this one because he's the first one that I would have made stem to stern, uh, with the exception of the 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 apocalypse helmet on this one. I make this one. I have made other apocalypse helms, but not not this one. But this this costume from from nothing to this is all is all me, which is fun because normally I just sew the things and then other people do the stuff for it. But I was like, hey, why don't you do this? And I was like, well, okay. Twist my arm. Ezekiel says, so many ideas flash before my eyes. Yeah, isn't that fun? Tina said, busting a gut. Thanks for the laugh. I needed it. Yeah, it's a different type of project. Yes. Okay. So yeah, but so we've got all of our um, bits and pieces ready to go for tomorrow's piece. How we're attaching these, this is, this is unique. I had not seen this or even really thought about doing this before. Um, we're attaching these little metallic pieces. You can see the patches on there. Um, this is the piece by itself. We have brads that stick out through the back. So we'll burn with the um, soldering iron a couple of you know eye holes for this. Stick it on there. Flatten them out. Let's see. Flatten them out in the back and then hot glue over that. So it, it stays really well. That's exciting to me because that's that's not coming off. <laughs> no. Yeah, and then when even after you spread those out, then I hot glue over them, yep. so they're yep. solid. Ezekiel says, I think the dwarf short person, whatever the correct term is, would suit my body shape. Fantastic. Uh, it's a fun look. It really <laughs> is a fun look. RS18 says, Gore's newest member. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I have my Cyclops is drying. My goat is firm. I'm ready to take on the world. Like this. And Cameron says, 
If I buy a mask, would I see it be made or painted in a stream? Uh, it's quite possible, especially if when you buy a mask, you say, please paint this live. Uh, but sometimes what that means is that it might take a little bit longer simply because I work more than I am live. So. <laughs> if you were live as much as you worked, you would never be off screen. Yeah. Have an emoji so I can finally make my Super Mario Danny DeVito cosplay. <laughs> That's right. You can. This is an awesome idea. I'll have to try. Yeah, I was uh, I was just going to hot glue him on there. And uh, it was like, nay, nay. Yeah, I always like a, uh, a physical attachment as well as a not physical attachment. Glue. <laughs> Chemical. chemical. A chemical bond. And a chemical bond. Where are your bricks at, yo? Because ah. <laughs> that looked like an uncomfortable squat. All of my squats are uncomfortable. That's my secret. This guy was base set a little while ago, so he needs to get a wipey down with a nappy naps. <laughs> Ezekiel says, physical, mechanical, chemical bond. Lisa says, new Mersapien? Awesome. Boy, you guys do not miss much. I'll tell you that. It might flash on screen for six seconds, and y'all are like, oh, what's that? Uh, yes, that's a Mersapien. I didn't like the fins, so I'm dialing in the fins to get the fins right. I think these fins are much more true to the toy character. Uh, and the cartoon, so I'm going to try this. Cindy says, anyone, want, anyone else wondering what a zombie and balloon would look like? And Ezekiel says, not anymore, Cindy. <laughs> yeah. in the shop for more than 22 minutes gets dusty. So that's our cutoff time. It's been 22 minutes. Ezekiel says, I love an EVA phone project. I know what I'm making next. Yeah. You defoaming him? No, I have a little bit of his neck that collapsed. Oh, no. I didn't like it. So I just wanted to pull that away from the phone so it looks a little better. Stephen LaCox says, I like the like that look of it better for the Mercedes. Uh, yeah, me too. I think the fins going out and straight like that were not the way to go. Hello, Enigma. Every time someone says Enigma's name, I think of the song, It's 3 a.m. Eternal. That, that's a song. I believe you. Yeah, probably before your time. My foam fill did not go the way that I wanted. It's just like you're wrestling with a taxidermy animal. Ezekiel says, I hear a nigga, I think of the guy with the jigsaw blue tattoo all over his body. He's oh, yeah. a, a nice guy. That, that the guy. I don't think Enigma's saying 3 a.m. Eternal. Enigma 
pieces are just like the Riddler from Batman. So same to y'all. Edward Nick says, my daughter always asked, is Spastic Pug on? She's fascinated with that name. <laughs> Rachel Powell says, yeah, I made it back for now. start bringing the latex into this room because yeah. it starts getting thicker. Heat is a no-no for latex. Steve Lecoq says, the werewolf head? Could be a goat. Yes. <laughs> there are four or five werewolf heads in here, so I'm just going to say yes. No, no. Uh, scar wax does not stick well. Like, it doesn't stick very well. So I don't like scar wax. Uh, wax makeups have gotten very popular, or um, like latex paste makeups have gotten very popular on Instagram because they're great for still photos where the makeup's not going to move, the actor's not going to be running around, or or, you know, nothing's going to touch it. Um, those makeups are not really good for haunted houses or movie sets. Uh, they just don't hold up, is the problem. Well, could be. Hello, Chance Speck. Done! Man. These are my, my order sheets that my wife makes up for me. I did this one. <laughs> Proud of myself. Cord Reedy says, Scarlax is hard to work with, but if you, if you run hot, get it. Gelatin or silicone are better. Most Instagram makeup is only good for in pictures. Yeah, uh, see, there's this interesting dichotomy that happened where with, so, with the rise of social media, um, the picture of the makeup on social media is the end product, not the makeup itself. So the makeup itself doesn't have to be durable. It doesn't have to do all the things that you need it to do on set. Um, and that's leading to a lot of young makeup artists who are kind of having a reality check when they go to do a movie set or something and their nose keeps falling off because it's not a prosthetic. It's not adhered on properly. They're used to Instagram. Um, and that's not, I'm not knocking them. It's a, it's, it's a knowledge gap that they're going to have to get over. Stacy, did you make the coat on your project? Yes, I did. She did. And all the other things. She's the bomb, yo. Happen Mojo says, you don't have any of your actors sitting on a couch or in a wheelchair? There goes my chance. Um, actually, There's sometimes we do. Uh, sometimes we do do that. But Stacy's job was to be on a couch for a, for a show. You didn't stay on the couch very long watching television. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was the last show we did. How did I forget about that? I had to check my sheet to see if this Frankenstein was black and white or color. And we had Joseph... He called up. What's this? Joseph Cook? Yes. Wait, we have like a couple of seated spots. Damn, of course, it's a two large masks that are needed repair. Do you bring old masks back to life? Or are they just, they're just wall hangers at the moment? Um, uh, it, it's possible. But for the time and energy invested in them, normally it's better just make new ones, uh, sadly. Now, if they are like old collector's pieces or something, you might want to have those restored. But if you just want to get another year or two of life out of it, let it go and move on to something that's going to last longer, time-wise. Cora says, I would have a pissed off producer slash director if I produce something that would not last longer than 10 minutes. You'd get fired. Um, yes, and it, I hear about it happening more and more because, you know, their portfolios are great because it's full of Instagram makeup pictures. <laughs> um, John C. says, can I lay on the couch drinking fireball? <laughs> of course you can. Connie said something. 
wasn't happy about it. <laughs> Ezekiel says, yeah, let's do that, John Z. Cheers. <laughs> Connie Kirk said, I had no idea that was you, Stacy. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> As um, Missy. Yeah, she was a peach. <laughs> Zombies in the house. It's not right. Oh, this is, that was a great room. It was. And like, did you catch the Easter egg in there? It looked like a. It was like a direct um, analog to like the Simpsons living room. The couch and the picture and the lamp and stuff. I said, heck yeah. I don't know where you want to be. Just let me know where you guys want to be. Like, if I'm mixing paint down here, I don't know if you want to see that. I don't know. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. Horror Beauty says, I wish more FX people lived in my tower. Me too! Ezekiel says, it sounds like if you call someone a peach in the USA, it's very different to Australia. What does it mean if you're a peach in Australia? Uh, well, if I say someone is a peach, well, they're a real peach. You're, that what I'm, I'm saying that sarcastically in that, because uh, peaches are sweet, they are not sweet. They're, they're not, they're not fun to, to uh, talk to, entertain, be with, enjoy. Half of the Mojo says, that's a big Twinkie. Okay. Or he says, is that a mask or a bust? It's a bust. I'll show you it's bust hole. <laughs> there is no. It is phoned in. Oh, oh my. What? As he goes, it's rated G, Stacy. Let's go with Peach is a man part. Oh. Oh, that's. That's wrong. <laughs> that's. that's so do you, do you watch that? I believe it was a lady part more. I mean, do you, I was gonna say that's that's our slang part. Like, do you do you watch the uh, Nicolas Cage part in Face Off and just laugh your ass off? <laughs> Could you <eat> peach bro? Stacy. It's not even my line. Just said his kids are home. Philip Earl said bust hole. <laughs> lady part. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bust hole. But there's not a hole An there. Like, hole. if it were a mask, there'd be a hole. If it was a bust, <laughs> no hole. Jeff Harris says, how are we doing tonight? Good. We're good. I'm trying to uh, fit a couple hours worth of work into an hour. Now, I have been here and working, but there's been some... <laughs> I have been doing some internets, unfortunately. Phil Burrell says, definitely lady part. Because he just says, my kids aren't here. Daddy needs a break. Okay. Probably Brian says, you are so getting demonized. I think he means demonetized here. Well, we could, yeah. Little like Hall of May. Little hey, like I've been Lee. demonized. <laughs> Feed my Frankenstein. Hungry for love. It's <laughs> Frenchman. I got you, Robert Brian. Is that like Simonized? Because I had one of them uncles that made things out of tea towels and service toads in a restaurant. When he made a peach, my grandma would slap him. <laughs> DM Cash said, Stacy, so sorry to ask you again, but how do you make scales from fur? Um, Can you grab me a scrap chunk of fur? Yeah. And uh, I think I've got a wall razor over there. And uh, we'll do you a demo. I think there's some scrap pieces that are decent size.
So what I'm putting on right now is a real dark green base. I wasn't sure we should show up better black and white. We had Probably the white. And then your razor. Now let me is... find a razor. Did you, do you see it? I don't. Take it over here. Possibly. I don't know which razor he's talking about. Is it a hair trimming? Yeah, it's a wall hair trimming razor. I feel like I've seen it. It's a kit? Yeah. That's also a cute. Uh... Ezekiel says, I love my Frankie. First piece I got from you. It's in my special cabinet. Stacy, while well, I'm looking for that razor, can you carry on with the dry brush? Yes. Screening him up. Yeah, light, light, light. You can always add more. You cannot take away. Rachel Powell says this Frank is giving me Elvis vibes tonight. There are a few things that I hate more than knowing I have a thing and not knowing where to find my thing. Somebody said, is Frank leaving the building? Yes. Mr. Ezekiel says, an Elvis hairdo would be a good addition. Dan says, one mask says Papoka on the inside and the circle number 24 on the inside. I don't know if they're collectible, but they're very cool. Also, they have arms and hands. There's also the letters BTC and pen. Uh, send me some, some pictures, and uh, I I'll, I'll, can probably identify those for you. Houses, first world crafter problems right there. It was right by my feet. <laughs> Oh, Masato posted tonight's sketch. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. That's going to be dwarf me, I bet. I have to see. I have to know. Who are you? I must know. No consequence. <laughs> okay. Oh, all. God. <laughs> Take you away. <laughs> all right, what you got? <laughs> okay, so what I have, what we have here is, uh, I have white fur, all right, um, 
and the hair goes going down this way. I'm gonna grab a marker just because. Food check says I heard the waiting music. Yeah. Girl from Ebenema is my go to. Waiting is old music. Now, I'm not looking at any visual reference. I'm just kind of doing it, okay? Which, granted, that's how I live my life. But. Because these, this fur has dimensionality um, with some depth, it's, it actually works pretty well for scales. Justin Ruby says, hey, Alan. Hello, Justin. Alan is a smart one. And you can just paint over top of this and get, you know, do whatever you want. But see how I drew those in? And the hair is pretty much, the direction of it is down. Alan, why do you have hair trimmers in your shop? Reasons. Yeah. Look at me, it's not for haircuts. And you can decide, you know, how much you put in on that scale. Good night, third degree. Maybe it's not showing up as good on the white. That black and silver Yeah, we'll get there. But you can kind of see already that I am getting dimensionality from shaving. Those, those scales have a bit of depth. that is this top layer is shaved in here and I'm going to do the second layer now uh, and then I'll hit it with a little bit of spray paint and you'll see it better. Mm -hmm. okay, that tutorial is up uh, in the group as well. And Igna says, what's the best blend you recommend? 
Uh, I like, well, okay, for what purpose? Is this for an actor to put in their mouth? Is this for a prop? Is this for a set? Art Lady Fluncer says, finally got the computer working again. Howdy, Alan and Peeps. Hey, good to see you. Hit it again. Do that one more time. For the whole thing? Yeah. The name is most realistic looking on camera and person, not from out. Okay. But I actually really like Elmer's clear Elmer's glue with uh, red food coloring. Clear Elmer's blue with red food coloring. Uh, and a little bit of blue is what I like. And I have a video on my YouTube channel called Blood on the Cheap. Alan, have you or do you enjoy blood-related foods, sausages, etc.? No. Not especially. I did not say I do not enjoy them, but I do not especially enjoy them. Realms asked, what are you doing? I'm shaving scales into fur. white film, you can get away with that. Try that today. It's a different shower scene. <laughs> Corey Seymour said, fishing line be a good option for whiskers or coarse hair? Yes, but the best thing to use is feathers. You get a feather and you strip the uh, you strip the quills off of it, and you're left with this really organic, nice, tapering stem. Too much work for a snake. Uh, for a snake, you can uh, you can just get a uh, a scale fabric because their scales are pretty much all the same size. This is really nice because you can change the size of the scales as you need to, or to conform to a creature. And when I shook this out a second ago. Um, that men, means that different hair, hairs are here, and I'm just hitting these spots a couple times to make sure I get all the hairs in that section trimmed out. Brandon D says, I believe that's called chocolate rain. And we believe would like to breathe some stay dry while others feel the pain. Well, uh, 
I had a delicious cheeseburger for lunch today. Slide into the next topic. The cash says so humble. Uh, Corey Seymour says, I'm currently working on a mole man mask to charge my naked mole rats. That's why I was asking about the fish plan. Uh, you asked me that, and I couldn't find my mole rat. It took me forever to find pictures of it. See those scales? That's shaved in. They have some depth, but let's hit it with a little bit of paint. Let's hit it with some paint. Thanks, Realms. Appreciate it. My comment reader wasn't looking either. I'm sorry. I'm right now with your comment reader on your mask painter. <laughs> See those scales? Now, and the hair look can easily go away um, depending upon how much you want to uh, mat this hair down with gunk, you know? Um, it depends on what I'm doing with it. I might I might dry brush latex over the surface, and that's going to put all those hairs together. Um, and since most scales are keratin anyway, uh, then being banded together like that is actually going to look kind of nice. Now, obviously, I planned none of this out, so. But I, I like that. Dan, of course, says, "What email do you want me to send the pics of the mask?" Oh, um, send it to stiltbeaststudios at gmail.com. Stiltbeaststudios at gmail.com. Brandon G says, boy, an iridescence on that would sure would look swell. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you have a lot of options. So, you know, yeah, you just have options. Laura Beauty says it's a cool technique. Thanks, Alan. Uh, no a problem. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. And, you know, different hair gives you different results. I can now be taken up over if you wish. Thanks, Jenny. says EVA pangolins. Um, yeah, I mean, that long a hair, you're going to get a longer... Uh, a longer look, but you can also do that in much shorter fur. Uh, that's just, you know, that's just what we told. Connie Pierce says that's wicked. I saw a Griffin costume done that way, and that's where I learned about it. Nice. And I loved it. Dan Cash says thanks so much. Uh, no problem. I would not try to do scales that are um, too much bigger than your trimmer because, uh, no, too much smaller than your trimmer, simply because, you know, you're going to have to have hand control in there. I think those pretty small. They do. Enigma says, can you tell us another haunted house funny story? Um, sure. That's not the case of Scott is the top mod. Yeah, he is. He's the bomb, yo. Uh, let's see. A funny haunted house. So, when I was 16, yeah, uh, I believe, um, I owned a haunted house in Beard Hill Shopping Center, Beard Hill Plaza in Bel Air, Maryland. And it was the uh, Fear Factory was the, was the name. Gore Tour 94 was the slogan. And I had a business partner who was a much older person than me because uh, I was 16. 
and he happens to have um, sons. Like his hobby was making sons. Uh, he he had five sons, all like within a year of each other. There was a 14-year-old, a 12-year-old, an 11-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a three-year-old. Dang, get a hobby. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they mostly, they acted as plants who would go through with groups because we had enough of them. Yeah. And then um, there was a scene that we did that was mm -hmm. all jungle and there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex that was a wooden frame. It was basically like big seesaw teeter-totter that we did where this T-Rex would come over a wall of vegetation and come down over top of one of the kids, pick up the kid, the kid would scream and kick their legs, <laughs> nice. but they would grab a bar inside of the mouth of the T-Rex. He would just, there was a guy back there who would push down, move, and, and set it down, and then you know they would run off and go back to the front of the haunted house. <laughs> so I was working that because that was kind of where our control center was, was there was, it was back in the day of tape players, and we would have tape players for each area with us. We screwed down the play button, mm -hmm. and that was what would keep them going. Um, so, you know, here comes a group, and I go over, and I work the thing, and I hit the button to make the, the dinosaur sound, and I, I move it, and I go over it, and I pop it down, and I lift it up, and I look, and the kid doesn't run off, and I'm like, what the hell? So I'm, like, I'm wondering, you know, what, what are they doing? Do they want to ask me something? So I look. It's not the kid. It's not one of our kids. It was a different random kid who, when I put the T-Rex over him, he grabbed onto the bar. <laughs> he grabbed onto the bar like he should. He screamed like he should. Um, and then when I got him, on, and then the parents are screaming and yelling, and I hear them over here. <laughs> and uh, I abducted a child with via Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> Uh, Did you made, put him back? All made of carpet. <laughs> no, because that was dangerous. Because if he had let go, I mean, he would have fallen, or it was like a spiky old fence. Oh, so God. if he had let go in the middle, he would have been impaled. Um, so it was the I abducted the wrong child, and uh, so you know he's then at that point he's scared because now he's in a dark room with a man. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, come with me, come on. And uh, so I I put him in the curtain, out the curtain, right in front of the, the group he just left. And uh, his parents are very happy to see him. <laughs> so I abducted a child via a dinosaur. Ezekiel says, get TV, bro, damn. <laughs> yeah. And Chester says, having cable helps to curtail that hobby. I had lots of kids. Yeah. Uh, Misty says, would that scaling technique also work for a feathered look on wings? It certainly can. Absolutely. Yep. Just make them longer. KBFX says, hey, buddy. A little bit of airbrush. Hello. Elle Copeland says, that's a great story. Corby says, best story ever. Michelle Schultz says, only you, Alan. <laughs> Not the first time I accidentally abducted a child. Well, that was the first time. <laughs> Not the last time that I accidentally abducted a child. Oh, and Nick Rose says, T-Rex are coming. Hide your kids, hide your wives. They abducted everybody out of here. That's right. Realm says, can you tell them the story? Enough, another one. You're here to watch the stuff, man. <laughs> Corby says, for both the kid is telling that story today. Like, oh, yeah, it's a different version. I get abducted by a T-Rex in a haunted house. <laughs> Corby says, damn, Ellen, now we're going to keep kids away from you. Yes, that's, that's the reason. That's the reason I don't have any, okay? I need some black. I got it. So he says, I always imagine the kids saying around the water cooler at work, I hate dinosaurs and haunted houses. Or he says, now I want to hear that kid's version. I love movies that are kind of like that, where two different perspectives of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Bob Boyce says, hey, the job did okay. Not like you locked him in the funeral home overnight or anything. So... <laughs> Uh, when I worked at Skull Kingdom, I was not always the happy-go-lucky guy that you know today. Uh, you know, I could be a little moody. And uh, one of the things that I didn't necessarily like 
was the, the pacing in a year-round haunted house is always kind of screwy. You're either slammed or, or you've got nothing and you're not doing anything. So, you know, that, that pacing, it's very hard to get used to. Um, and uh, so it was summer. I remember this very clearly that it was summer. And we should have been slow because it was the afternoon. We were busier than I wanted to be. And they wouldn't send in a group until the last group got to a certain point. Uh, there was a room at the top of the steps called the trampoline room, where the guests were literally walking across the trampoline and the walls were trampoline, and the actor would push on the other side and stuff. Um, and that was kind of fun. Uh, well, after that, they went into a beanbag room that was very dark. In that beanbag room, there was a little closet, which is how you got back behind the trampoline. So in Orlando, many of the groups were foreign, and they did not speak good English. So those groups could not really tell on you very well if you did something wrong to them. Uh, <laughs> well, it's true. Um, so, you know, keeping that in mind, that was a very important tidbit, uh, keeping that in mind, when they got to the beanbag room, they were supposed to turn right, but I, I, I stood at the end and I said, this way, this way, and I would put them into that closet of the trampoline room to keep it safe. It only went back about 12 feet, and it was like three feet wide, and one wall was a squishy trampoline wall. Um, and I, I, so I, I ushered the whole group in there. They got in there. I went in behind them. I closed the door. It had a deadbolt so that guests couldn't push their way in and corner an actor. I would lock the deadbolt, and I would climb out over the top because young Alan was very spry. And I, I would just climb out over the top, and then I went down into the break room to wait because I, I knew they wouldn't send the next room. I'm like, I don't know where they are. I know that they were upstairs. <laughs> Uh, in about 20 minutes or so, I would take my break time as I needed it. Then I would go and I would let them out and uh, continue the haunted house's plan. And right. th that particular group, when they were let out, they it happened a couple times, but that particular group, they were very like, oh, oh thank you, thank you. They were, they were very happy that we let them out. They, they thought they did something wrong. And I, I'm like, you shouldn't be here. What are you doing? And they didn't know it was the same person, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Miranda D says, why have your own kids? You can just kidnap them in a haunt. That's right. Stockholm Center was a bomb starter with familial love anyways. Yeah, I believe that. Stephen Scott said, poor kid probably couldn't watch Jurassic Park. <laughs> Chad Smith says, I feel like one night should just be Alan sitting in front of a fireplace in a cozy chair and a Hugh Defner house coat telling his haunt stories. Story time with Mr. Hobbs. Oh, in 1980, came up with the perfect title for that particular episode, <laughs> which would have to be Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> I I like that a lot. 1980, you get 10 internet points. <laughs> That's funny. As he goes, I went. I once put my boss's son in a cardboard box after my boss asked me to look after him while he ducked out for a bit. Annoying little brat. Nice. And of course, it says email sent. One is a really old distortions unlimited with hands and feet. There, there was another time. Now, Hugo, don't take this wrong. Um, Brazilian tour groups were some of the worst that we dealt with uh, in Orlando. And I won't say which haunt it was that I was at. But we had a Brazilian tour group that was especially rowdy, and they were kind of swinging on us and stuff. And uh, so I had this group of 11 of them in a room, and it's my job to talk to them and then send them on the next one. And uh, so I got them all in the room, and I closed the door, and they're all trying to run through the door, that, which would screw up the timing. They're all trying to get through the door. They're ignoring me because they don't speak English. I understand that. Um, I just kind of grabbed one and threw it. And, and, uh, and they're like, you can't touch, you can't. And they were, they were very much, you can't touch us. I'm like, I didn't. And they're like, I'm an adult. They're going to believe me. They're not going to believe you because I'm an adult. <laughs> and I, I, I very much threatened them. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> Which, they were scared. 
in the nature of being scared, and then once once the little light that was red turned green that I could see and it was out of their view, then I, I, I let them go on. But uh, yeah, every time I popped out after that, they were really scared of me. Ghost Train Productions asked, what did I miss? I may have thrown a child. <laughs> Fine. They were very spry and bouncy. Nice lady says, how to wreck a kid's childhood. Matra Art says, hello, love me some Frankenstein creature. What is your favorite movie version? I think the Monster Squad version is my top pick. Oh, Monster Squad is one of my top five movies, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and give you that. Um, now, there's other monsters that I really like, and not a traditional looking Frankenstein, but I love the look of it. Um, it was the Hammer Films Frankenstein, where he's super hairy and he's almost like an ape, and it you know gets a very hard crease where they put his brain back together. I think it was called Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, and then they had Jesse James versus Frankenstein, which was awesome. Yeah, maybe it wasn't awesome, but I enjoyed it. I like the Penny Dreadful one. I don't think I oh yeah too normal for me, not very monstery. He was so nice. Man. He was the nicest person in the show. He was. Like, he was the nicest person in the show. Legit. So, yeah. Adam Sparhunt says, uh, love watching your videos, Alan. Question, how do you determine how much a prop slash mask is worth when you sell it? Uh, time and materials. Um, if you want to just keep yourself honest, a simple way to do it is materials times five. And then if you are taking too long to make it, then that's on you. Uh, so materials times five is, is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to pick your day rate and how much is your time worth in, for one day's work and then divide that by how many of that thing you could make in a day plus the cost of materials. Uh, when I am hustling, I can pour 10 masks a day, I can trim 10 masks a day, I can paint and strap 10 masks a day. So at a thousand dollar day rate, a standard mask for me runs about a hundred bucks. Misty says, love Monster Squad also. KBFX says, do you like Robert De Niro's look of Frankenstein? It was okay. I was a little turned off by the um, Robert De Niro, Kenneth Branagh rolling around in embryonic fluid. Uh, embryonic fluid. Uh, really slippery and gross and uh, not what I was after at the time. KBFX, this is a safe space. We understand when you say Frankenstein, you mean the monster. Um, yes. Realms. Intel uh, intelligence is knowing <laughs> that Frankenstein is the doctor. Wisdom is knowing that Frankenstein is the monster. Because on every DVD cover of Frankenstein, it's a picture of the monster. It says Frankenstein, and there's the monster. They have labeled him Frankenstein. The doctor barely even ever appears on the cover. Sorry. <laughs> Realm says, on the sheet ghost, what did you spray on the fabric? Uh, Super 77 spray adhesive from 3M. Horror Beauty says, 92 creepers watching. Holy moly. Everybody comes out with Frankenstein. Huh? <laughs> Chad Smith says, my wife just said, look at the spray paint can. I said, which one? She said, the one that has something humping it. I said, that's a Bigfoot air freshener hanging on a spray. <laughs> I guess he is a little friendly with the uh, he's actually six inches in front of them thank you Scott Kolhar for sharing our tea spray store Corey says Monster Squad always reminds me of how Pepsi used to cut cardboard face masks from the classic horror monsters on their 12 packs back in the day the what? 90s were a wonderful time for the universal monsters they had a little nice mini resurgence I also miss the uh, full cardboard cutouts of Elvira that they used to have in the gas station. I had, uh, they had on the Pepsi containers, which I was a Coke drinker even back then, um, I, but I had the Pepsi containers, they had beach scenes with the monsters. Nice. And I had all of those, and I had them all taped together, they made one scene. Ross Richard says, on Dark Shadows, his name was Adam. Yes. I think his name is Adam in the... Well, the book was originally, the story was originally titled Adam the New Prometheus. Mm -hmm. So that is why many people say that the monster's name was Adam, 
but in most versions, he is not actually named. Ed's some juice says, hi kids. Hello, Ed some juice. Okay, Bex says, do you do a wash before or after your dry brush technique? Uh, depending upon the mask. Normally on Frankenstein, I do not. Everything I do from here on out is lightening him up. So he's going to get wider, 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 wider. And he says the cereal monsters did that back in the day. The display stuff, I guess. Yes. Realm says, is it a prop head or a mask? This is a prop head. I would show you his uh, bust hole, but <laughs> apparently that's not good for YouTube guidelines. The mask cutouts, I think he says, yeah. Masato says, you paint this guy white slash blue, he'd be an awesome white walker. Except for the square head, but you could always fix that. He does have a bit of a square head. He's a square head at front of time. He's a square head. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What else did we do today? I feel like we did a lot of stuff. Painted a lot of stuff today. Enigma says, do you ever have some moments of self-doubt when sculpting? I tend to have some, especially when starting a sculpt. Not so much towards the middle or end of it. Casey? Yes. You're doing a great job, but I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. No, I can't. Do you ever have some moments of self-doubt when sculpting? I tend to have some, especially when starting a sculpt, not so much towards the middle or end of it. Um, self-doubt. Uh, unfamiliar to me. Um, no, I don't think I do. Uh, now, there, there have been sculptures where I'm like, boy, I really suck at now today. Um, but, you know, it's, you fight through it. Dan McCorson says, just an FYI, 140 yards of wood chips is a huge pile. Yes, sir. Justin Rudy says, I can't wait to show you my new sculpt. I'll wait to show you until I'm further along, but I think you'll enjoy its look so far. It's a little more on the haunt side than my previous one. Cool. Now, uh, did you mold the toothy ear thing that you made? I love that. I thought that looked beautiful. I could see that coming out of a kid's closet. I mean that in the best possible way. Waiting on the bills. <laughs> We're going to be up until 3 a.m. <laughs> no, my sugar keeps me up. Caffeine doesn't. Yeah. When I just stopped doing keto, when the family came, yeah. I had like... I had too much sugar in one day. Yeah. And I couldn't I didn't sleep last night until 5 a.m. Oof. Yeah. Shannon's making all this freaking ice cream. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. It's magical. Ezekiel says ice cream soda horror. Okay. Realms says love your workshop. Hey, thanks. Rather fond of it myself. Justin says, that's the one. He's more evolved now, but I still got some work to do on it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I can't wait to see it. I, I, was, I really like that. Polar Beauty says, did you get the keto flu when you started? Uh, no. I don't get sick, though. Like, it's very rare for me to get sick. Um, there was a diet that I did a ways back, which was called Metafast, and you cut down to a thousand calories a day, and you're eating like four Snickers a day, and that's all that you eat, because I thought their soup was terrible. Um, so you can have a shake, a soup, or a bar, and I just, you know, if, if eating is not a focus thing, then I'll just grab the bar and keep going. Um, and I didn't get sick, but boy, I had no energy for like the first three days. And then I was fine. Four days, I wondered if that was a myth. Now, I got it real bad the last time we tried to do Oh man, I got keto flu so bad. I, I felt terrible. Um, I was like trying to keep up with the, uh, the like the zero sugar, uh, like power aids or whatever. Oh right. man, it was rough. <laughs> Corey Simo says, what did you see, what do you think of the new Blumhouse and Visible Man movie? I heard uh, they're setting up to do a new Dracula and Frankenstein next. I haven't seen it yet. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it yet. And I haven't seen it yet simply because, uh, remember I said that I wanted to watch more TV? 
Um, you know, those kind of horror movies and stuff that came out are things that I want to see coming up. Steve Hondyard says, same, I don't get sick often. Okay. Rob O'Brien says, oof, Metafast is rough. Mm-hmm. 1980 says, Frank looks like an old school park statue. It worked. I got the, uh, oh, I could see that with the green patina. Yeah, I've got a turquoise color that I use for that that I really like. Um, yeah, it, it got the weight off of me, which is what I needed. Too extreme, I did eventually gain all that weight back. 1980 says, the founder of Steinsville. Steve Sonnenberg, yo, Alan, and wife. Uh, wife is not here. This is Stacy, who works in the shop. Actually, uh, I'm not wife. She is awesome, but she is not my wife. <laughs> she has her very own husband. It's true. And I know that this is a little bit of a sloppy layer that's going on, but that's giving me a mottled look. And it's keeping the skin tones from being too even. Realms says, I love your workshop. Uh, thank you. I too love my workshop. Steve says, yo, Stacy. Hey, yo. It's 10, 23. Holy moly. <laughs> Robert Ryan says, stunt Shannon. Yep. <laughs> Zach Weidman says, I've been sticking to the two ice cream cone diet. Hasn't really panned out well. <laughs> That's right. You shouldn't have any more than two. So. Came over here for a color. I just forgot which one. <laughs> you know when that happens. Michelle Schulte says, love seeing Frank. Get my Frank creature tattoo on the seventh. Already have the bride. Wow, awesome. Ghost Train Production says it's 1124 in North Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. Corey Seymour says, and Ohio. The whole Eastern time zone. Mm -hmm. Virginia. Yeah, that's how that works. Could be a whole band of those. Was Ezekiel here? What time is it in uh, Australia? <laughs> Rachel says, and most of Indiana. Well, these were consistent. Yeah. No, nothing is broken. She says it's 125 in the afternoon. Justin Rudy says, I'll send side shots when I'm at that point. But do you think a traditional two-part mold will work? Or do you think the teeth and the ears will be an issue? No, I think it's fine. Um, split your mold wall along the ear. Gregory Haynes says, and Jacksonville. <laughs> Got reports coming in from all over the country. Yep. Confirming that the time is, in fact, the same. As he goes, but it's Tuesday here. Well, you're way off. Got a leg up on us. Yeah, you got to fix that. Kenny P says it's 4.25 a.m. in Edinburgh. Tell me how Monday was. Dang. Nice uh, day says it's tomorrow there in Australia. Always tomorrow, maybe today. Where Beauty says still Monday here, 11.26 p.m. Hooray. Rachel Powell says, currently in Indiana, we have a series of supercells popping up, and they are very slow moving. Wow. Juan for Duke says, FYI, I picked up a can of foam made by GE at Walmart. There's a large gap and small gap can. I may have to play with that. Hey, Stacy. Yes, sir. You're right. I should throw my back <laughs> I am not the wife. I am a wife. <laughs> I don't even know what my back brace is. Not here, it's not here, is it? No, that's trash bags. Ah, it's probably over the house. You had it earlier. And now I'm trying to find my blue mask paint, too. I also want that. 
Le Bleu. Uh, the bottle just like these, but it's blue. Spook. You guys, let me know if you see it. Spook Shack says, have you ever used a little blue in the dark in those? No, I have not. Not on these guys yet. Ezekiel says, Monday was fine. Tuesday's been crap so far. Damn noisy kids. Good night, Rodney. How dare they? Good night, Rodney. Last thing you painted blue. Probably Rodney's skull. I don't use a lot of blue. It's been Should be over here, yeah. Found it. Hey! Logic our way through this. Enigma says post it in the group, but if you get a chance, can you answer my question there on the post, guys? Everybody go check the group. What's the question? I don't know. So it's in the group. He wants everybody else to answer. Oh, not me? Right. Okay. Realm says you should do a giveaway. And who says that? People who want free stuff. <laughs> we'll do uh, live stream trivia. Misty says you used blue yesterday on Karen's eyeshadow. I did, and that's why I was over there. You're right. I think this is LOL. I want Alan to answer too. Check the group. Later. This is blue. Well, I'm not trying to paint it blue. I'm just putting some blue notes in there to break up. You know, your chair extends up pretty high, too. So. Well, that's a good idea. You have this fancy chair. I, I do. <laughs> I'm not a thinker. Or if he says, speaking of Karen, how did her mole turn out? Oh, uh, how did her mole turn out? Her, her drool. Oh, the drool is wonderful. Uh, do you know where the mask is? Uh, is it in the other room? Up on that shelf. Here. Touch her forth. Oh, Ezekiel says, just got a huge haul of tin pans ready for care packages as soon as the International Post opens. How are I'm sending them. Woohoo! Oh. And just so you guys know, I'm under no aspirations that I'm an awesome and amazing mask painter. I get by. Um. I get by. I can do the job, but oh yeah. Here she is, Miss Amanda. Show her, show them how stiff the drool is. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets to be pretty solid, and that's why I really like that stuff. It's nice and solid drool. I was wearing it earlier, and it's pretty creepy. She's pretty. Creepy. Chris, you're fast posting. There's an artist that does a raffle slash drawing for a custom piece. That would be fun. Uh, that's a possibility. Realm says, I don't want free stuff. I just thought it would be a good idea. Well, it, it's okay to want free stuff. <laughs> Enigma says, when you take photos for your website to put them on sale, do you use a light box? And what types of light do they work best for you? Show all the details. You, that is a wonderful question for my wife. Uh, she does use a light box. Do you want to take this in and show them the, her, their, her light box? Since I'm uh, going to take Karen back anyways, let's go and get this off of here without... Here you go. I got one hand. <laughs> take, and then spin. Flippity-doo-doo. All right, here we go. She says, oh, wow, that is scary in my face. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys. I only have one hand. So. Into the mold room. This is where the silicone lives. This is Shannon's photo studio setup. Got all of the packing supplies, and this is where they come and live before it's time to go. So get back up there, Karen. All right, so there's Karen and Darren. And then, so she's got some some lights set up on the side. 
over here in a lovely little packing and photographing station. It's a monster foot. It looks like it might almost be ready to pull. And we're back. Did they see the light box? They did see the light box. Ah. When I was across the room, I thought he needed to be lightened up a little bit. Yeah. I thought he was a little green and a little too dark. Because I see Karen and Ken now after a couple protected their home, I saw on the news. Oh, the the grossest. Ugh. What? Uh, it's a a couple of uh, of people who were uh, quote unquote protecting their house from people protesters with terrible trigger control and guns in people's faces. It was yikes. Gross. Um, Misty says I gotta say goodnight as well. Alarm for work will be going off before I know it. Um, and Amos says, is that clear drool silicone? Uh, it is a very specific type of silicone called, well, it's actually not silicone. No. It is Gorilla Glue Clear Adhesive. And it's in a caulking tube, just like silicone is. Ezekiel says, put Karen on and the dwarf shoes. <laughs> Listen, there will be things you can't unsee in life, and that would be one At of them. At some point, I'll probably make a, uh, a dwarf to run around the red fair in. Yes. I think he'd be a lot of fun. Core Beauty says looks a lot stronger than just regular clear caulk. It is. It's, it's wonderful stuff. I really love it. Enigma asks, uh, did you make the lightbox yourself? No. Did Shannon make it herself? Uh, no. Shannon's dad bought it and he doesn't like technology so he gave it to Shannon. Core Beauty says monster foot, monster foot. It looks like it's about ready. The latex seems to be a little not white anymore. Um, 1980 says on Cam he looks stone gray. Really? Thank you, Scott Colhart, for that gorilla glue construction adhesive link. What's funny is I just watched the lighting change on him. I don't know what this button does. 1980 says I was in St. Louis. The protesters broke into a private community and were threatening violence. Two people are lawyers. Lawyers with terrible trigger control. I mean, we are not going to comment on it. Juan for Duke says, do you have a good way to keep caulk from drying out? Yes, use it all. Um, yeah, just use it. Because uh, it's, not, it's not meant to hang out in the tube very long. Uh, and you can get in a lot of trouble if you use expired caulking. So, uh, and it's, you're, you're talking, the most expensive caulk that I use is $14 a tube. And if I don't use it all, I keep it for the next project, if it's within two months, or I just throw it out. Ezekiel says, when's the, uh, when's the Ren Fair all around his dwarf with the Ren instrument singing? Um, it is normally in the spring. This year, we didn't have a Renaissance Festival. Yeah. Oh my gosh, can you imagine Ezekiel and Izzy out there oh, fun du times. dueling instruments? Oh my gosh, it'd be incredible. Or Rudy says, no, he's green. When you move certain places, it changes colors. Yeah, I mean, and he's not, I don't want him green, you know, I, I want him to feel green. Nice thing, he says, not masculine enemies. That's right. Graf Graphic UK says, Karen looks sexy. Whatever you're into, man. I'm not uh, a judger. Dan McCorrison says, uh, 3M 4000 UV is also an excellent product. For? No same. Enigma says, is it worth thinning your silicone or can you just brush it on in thin layers? For what? It depends on what you're doing. It, it, it all depends on what you're doing. Corey Seymour says, Ohio's run fair is until late September. If it doesn't get canceled, you can always visit ours. That is true. What part of Ohio is it? Horror Beauty says he reads mintish green with white highlights and gray lowlights. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Enigma says for mold making. Yeah, caulk, caulk mold. They're talking about uh, whether it's worth it to thin it. Oh, no, no. I mean, it's, and because if you, if you need enough detail or you have to thin silicone caulking, then uh, I would just buy some silicone. Says mask mold 
making with a hydrocal outer shell. Yeah, I, I would not thin it. Ezekiel says, I'd love a hurdy gurdy. What a great sound, right? Corey Seymour says, halfway between Columbus and Cincinnati. Okay. Well, we, we have a fall this year. Texas Renaissance Festival, maybe. That'd be fun. Okay, so uh, Frankenstein is largely painted. Um, and we are at 1030, right? Yeah, 1037. Oh. Okay, so I'm probably going to stop for the night. We have been in here for a while. A hot minute. Uh, approaching the 12 hour mark. Um, so, probably time for us to wrap. Uh, you guys are. Oh, I got to put my Cyclops together. Yeah. I bet the glue was dry by now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Everyone's like, hey, oh, just kidding. Yep, that's, that's, I do that a lot to you guys. Surprise! And I guess I get, it's great progress today, guys. I get excited about stuff. Ezekiel says, some rest, guys, seriously. No. One day. <laughs> One day they will be resting. Today is not that day. Oh. Oh, this is so hard. I always line the mask up by the eyes. I always line it up by the eyes when I'm putting it on, and I can't, I'm like, there's one eye. What do I do? Uh, okay, so this is going to be a little bit different. Um, <laughs> Next day says, after credit, Easter eggs. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it says. There, I'm lining it up by the mouth. <laughs> Elkhope says, you can't quit us. Or Reeves says, now what are you going to do? Seymour, I love the Ohio Red Fair. We're there for over 11 years carving limestone. What? That's awesome. Really? That's awesome. Justin Beck says... Um, I just have a monster. One of these days, I'd like to come help you. Okay, come on. Bring it up. Cyclops and the Dwarf Shoes, so many options. Yeah. Cyclops and the Dwarf Shoes sounds like a band name. Yeah. Never, never second guess your horn placement. Never. You guys do it in one whack. Yeah. Chad Smith says, I got female. Super stoked about coming down. Can't wait. Cool. That means he got my wife's email, because I don't know what he's talking about. But I think we're doing a hit cast. And Nick says the FX industry needs to hire a scientist to make an FX gel so it doesn't smell like dick. Well, it turns out when you boil horse parts, it doesn't smell good. That's, that's, it's, it's, I mean, I, I, like, yeah. We just never thought about it like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've, I've literally been covered in gelatin, so. It's like, dead animal smell. Yeah, it does not smell Okay, so this is just that last little bit that you put on. Do you use cherry jelly Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, better. There was some glycerin in that bad boy. I just don't want to. Ezekiel says, it's the name of the Silby Screamer's band name, Cyclops and the Dwarf Shoes. Yes. <laughs> we only do weird covers. Uh, Realm says, what are you using to make it stink? Uh, uh, no, gelatin. Gelatin just smells bad. It's, it's deep it is. It is horse hooves and parts and cartilage all boiled up to make a substance that will gel. Stacy needs to tell the gelatin story now. Do I? Uh, yeah. YouTube. No, actually, it really is. Not, it's not a bad story. Oh no! I don't know. It's not, not that. Bad. Bad. <laughs> it's as bad as you want to think it is. That's right. As he goes, I'm making t-shirts. <laughs> Scalios. Let's see if oh, it was black Mom under says, there. What are you using to make it stick? Oh, stick, not stink. Um, <laughs> Weldwood contact cement. That's what I always use. It's the good stuff. 
this particular can is not the good stuff. <laughs> this was good stuff once. It was good stuff once upon a time. Now it's still stuff. Uh, says, okay, guys, I'm out. Have a good YouTube Wednesday project tomorrow. Thank you, thank you. Thinking ahead, you are. I forgot what I was thinking. <laughs> See, you might as well look like cradled by the, the uh, Cyclops horn. Thanks, Vader. says, if it involves a kiddie pool on a ref, I've heard already. It does not. <laughs> I wouldn't do jello wrestling because I wouldn't want to hurt anybody. I would. Also, I don't mind. Also, I've gotten jellos in my eye before and it is not pleasant. Al Copeland says, heard or done, 1980. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's nothing in your eye where it's like, oh, I didn't mind that. Yeah. You know, like when you get it in your eye. There's nothing where it's like, oh, that was okay. Like even water in your eye stinks. Yeah. About it. Alexa, countdown six minutes. That was a complete farce. I now six have to Seven work minutes. on this. <laughs> we'll be out here by 11. I thought I was leaving. Because as I've refereed Jelly Wrestling in the 90s, it was a good time to be in a band. Truth. Realm says, okay, I'll be safe. Love y'all. Love you too. So, one time when I was a Wolfman in Orlando, uh, <laughs> It was for the bar, Janie Lane Sunset Strip is where I where I worked. But you know, all the bars nearby, and the, and I knew everybody kind of, and you know, if you walked to work, you walked by the Wolfman who was handing out flyers to this bar. So I was asked, you know, the Sunset Strip was asked if they would send me as a judge for a bikini contest at Hooters. And, you know, it's like, okay, let's put a banner up and sure. And so they did, and um, apparently that was a bikini contest organizer who liked having the Wolfman as a judge. That year and a half, I bet I judged 40 bikini contests. Nice. And I was paid. I was paid for this service. Not a bad gig. Yeah, for a 20-year-old, he, he was, I was digging it. <laughs> Touch my hand and I'm a king. There's no need to know the reason why you love me as you do. But that's the wonder, the wonder of Of course, he wore a blue using to patch that. Blue shop towel. It's blue shop towel because you rip those edges and then it, it just gets nice and thin and uh, any detail you want to show through will show through and detail you don't want to show through kind of just doesn't and while we're here so that we can just come at me bro tomorrow on this Cyclops what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thicken up some contact cement with polyfiber real quick and we're going to put this around the base of the horn hey beef it up so it beefs it up and uh, glues it down oh no yeah it's turned off he's fine mate. Supposed to be in that drawer, but I may have used it over here. Fixing up. Something else. Mm -hmm. 
that bottom left floor over there. That's where the whole bag goes. Is this, where's that plaster? Plaster. Yeah. Found it. Why it's over here? I have no idea. <laughs> is he goes to the stage, he's gonna do the dwarf shoe shuffle? <laughs> no. <laughs> Doesn't look as good on me. And today he says, I used to work next to an alternative club. They were nice when we took turns riding on a pallet, lifted by a forklift to watch the unclothed volleyball tournament while on the clock. Okay. And neither confirm nor deny my right? knowledge of unclothed volleyball. That doesn't sound fun. It's like naked volleyball. I'm far too competitive. <laughs> Truly. Like, I, my, my goal would be to win the volleyball game, and that's, I don't think that's the same goal that they have. Corey Seymour says, is that like Cavacil? Uh, yes, but it doesn't cause cancer when you breathe it in. Ezekiel says, it should be a prerequisite for guest sculptors the dwarf shoe shuffle. And now I have a contact cement paste. I actually use this all the time when I am um, gluing two masks together, like to make a two-faced thing or whatever. Could you pipe that? Yeah. Completely pipeable. That is also, for anyone who's interested, roughly the texture of the gel um, contact cement. Yeah. The polyfiber is inert, so it really has no properties at all. Yeah. Just takes up space. Yes. Mm. Alexa, stop. I'm so far past you. Alexa, you're holding me back. It's not me, it's you. Here's there's nothing holding me back. That's Sean Mendes. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> Alexa, stop. Smart Alec. Smooth check says nothing quite smells like a buffalo head one week. Attacked, but it's an easy European mount. Yes. Are you into taxidermy? That's cool. Yeah. And you like taxidermy? People who are into taxidermy generally are a little weird. Shocked, I tell you. I'm specifically into bad taxidermy or weird taxidermy, like the Asquatch, like the, like where they Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, the great use for a leftover deer butt. <laughs> There's no such thing as leftover deer butt, okay? Leftover deer butt. You have to admit, yeah, because if you, if you just do a head mount, you're going to have a lot of leftover deer. <laughs> Says, are you able to add texture to that before it fully dries? Yes, but I'm about to smooth this with my finger, and then I'll go back and add a little bit of just the liney, ridgy texture. But I'm going to put we'll get a little cup of water. As he gives us a little weird, we're in good company. 1980, I'm kind of questioning whether I should read this when it involves woman in quotes. Larry Hughes says, I have several taxidermy animals. I am not weird. What you do taxidermy? This is naphtha. Rich Powell says, my cat left a chipmunk dead on my flower bed. It's well on its way to being a skeleton. I'd love to wire that skeleton and have a little chipmunk on my mantle. Yeah, see? Weird. <laughs> Mary Hughes says, no sir, I'm a hunter. Good night, Scott Colehart. I'm only using the water on my finger to keep it from sticking. And see how much I can smooth that out? Pretty smooth, eh? 
right there. You just use a little bit of naphtha to keep it from sticking to your finger. Rich Powell says, I'm very weird and proud of it. Ghost Train says, I agree, Larry, it's not too bad. I wear a real piece of rabbit fur as part of my Jack Sparrow costume. I bet that smells awesome. I know it doesn't because my Magnus Crane costume had a bit of rabbit fur on it. And about midday, I was awesome. Skip this one. Taught me a new trick. Thanks. Uh, no problem, buddy. It's always a good day when you learn something new out here. Rachel Powell says, thank God no fire ants in Indiana. Oh, jelly. Okay. Josh Jones says, just turning in that tuning in now. What kind of shenanigans are we getting into tonight? Well We're about don't, to be getting out of. Don't read anything that uh, 1980 posts. <laughs> Which is just a good general rule of rule of thumb. Shannon doesn't read it out loud. You probably shouldn't either. Yeah. Hello, Kirk Mataya. What's up, buddy? Rich Powell says, I got attacked once while I lived in Florida. My feet were swollen for a week. Fire ants. They're vicious, man. We do not have chiggers on our property, but we have fire ants. Ooh. Need more bees. Well, I actually... I will grab the shovel and I'll pick up the whole mound and a shovel and I will put it on top of another mound and oh, then you get out to the they will fight and they will actually send out scouts to make sure that that whole group is dead nice. and often it gets rid of most of them. Mel Copeland says Florida has so many things that want to fight you. Yeah, I lived in Florida for maybe eight years. I discovered a new species of bug every day. Okay. Oh, so you can see that, Corey. That texture, though. Let's put a little bit of texture in it, and you really can't see it from that. There you go. The light was bad. As you said, try living in Australia. Rachel says, Florida, America is Australia. I mean, that's fair. Like, that's... Kind of. <laughs> um, I, just, I fell into a mound when I was young. They bit me so relentlessly. Good times. Corey Seymour says, so awesome. Elko one says, I was there for 34 years. Okay, so the last thing I'm doing... Swear I'm is putting contacts in on top of that towel so it will paint the exact same as the rest of the head. All right, so we have now uh, buttered up a Cyclops. Buttered up a Cyclops. Rich Bowles says, worst insects I've encountered in Indiana is the beloved yellow jacket. The beloved? Yellow jackets are jerks. Remember that time I said that was the last thing I was doing? Well, I'm going to stick to it. I'm Next sticking to says, it. South Texas says it's so bad they make little roads between them that you can see in the grass. Fred Slot says, love butter. Yeah. Okay, gang. So that was that. We done. Corey asked when you were screaming again. Oh. Um, Thursday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday night. Because today is Monday. I take Tuesday off. I have to edit and make a YouTube Wednesday. And then Wednesday night we do Sculpt the Palooza, where uh, I will sculpt and it will be a lottery to decide uh, what I'm sculpting. You guys get to pick. And then Thursday I'm taking off and I'm going to watch some TV with the wife. Friday I'll be live again. So 
roughly 7 to 10 p.m. So, uh, I, I will start probably 6.30, 7 o'clock. Yes, I will be sculpting hopefully about 7.15. You're going to guest sculptor this week? I do not have a guest sculptor this week. I'm going to do guest sculptors every other week because what's happening is I'm making too many molds. And, well, I, I have too many sculptures happening, and then I fall behind on my orders because I have to make molds of all the sculptures that we've done. So it's an uh, embarrassment of riches is what it's called. Yes. All right, gang. So Stacy, say good night. Peeking out from behind the Cyclops horn. Good night. And I say, go make stuff. <laughs>